across the mountain. There. Where? Under there. What? The spider. Oh. Is it dead? Just do something, OK? I hate spiders. Are you sure you piled it off books on top of it? I ran across the floor, so I dropped a book on it. I put the others on top, so it couldn't get out. Rumble couldn't get out of here. Could you please just do something? All right. Let's have a look at the little monster. Well, don't let it out! There's nothing here. It must be there. Ah, here's your mistake. You've stuck the coldest story on top of it. It's more probably ready than tunnelled out. It's not funny. It's funny, really, because we don't usually get spiders running across the floor. Oh, good. No, no, they're usually quite happy living in the bottom of your drawer in the desk. Oh. It's all right, it's all right. I'll protect you. I know it's an irrational fear, but I've always had an aversion to little things. Well, you're safe now. By the way, who are you? Oh, sorry, I should have introduced myself. Julia Parker Smith. Pleased to meet you. What are you doing here? Well, I'm from the Roberta Flaxwell Bureau. Oh, good, so you're the new temp. Yes, I've never worked on a newspaper before. <laughs> well, the odd thought class in an advertiser isn't exactly typical. It's 30 pages of face, adverts, and out-of-focus pictures. Are you Mr. Osborne? Me? No, no, I'm Norman. Norman Tubbs. The Mr. Osborne of whom you speak is the esteemed owner. Oh. How long have you been with the Claxton? Ah, uh, about 300 years. <laughs> I used to be with the Mercury. I'd still be there now if I hadn't made my fatal mistake. Gosh, what did you do? The editor's daughter. <laughs> now I'm here bowing and scraping to Mr. Ken Osborne who doesn't know a thing about newspapers, he used to be a plumber. <laughs> the only good thing he's ever done around here is get the toilets flushing. Well, then why is he... This. Oh, this is all his wife's money. She set him up. He wouldn't know the difference between a Christmas card and a newspaper. Who wouldn't? You win, you wouldn't. You win Woodward. You win Woodward. I'm a new postman. Morning. Julia Parker Smith. Mr. Robert Maxwell. <laughs> Ken Osborne. Good morning, Mr. Osborne. I've taken some messages this morning from... Mrs. Osborne. She rang at 856, 859, and 903. She said, she said, were they a Lizzie? <laughs> you know, Ken, I don't know why she doesn't get you electronically tagged, like they do prisoners. Very funny, Norman. Oh, she has. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear, no, dear. Three bikes full, dear. Oh, Mr. Osborne, I think the kitchen tap is faulty. Norman! Oh, coming, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, I will, dear. All right, dear. Yes? Mm. Well, yes, but I've got to go now. I'll see you later. <laughs> no, I can't now. Because I can't. <sighs> yes, of course I do. All right. Bubbles loves his pixie boots. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, Ken. Well, don't. I think we underestimate the power of the flaxen. Do you realise we are the grease on the cobs of the gears of the engine that turn the wheels of the car, that run down the street? I've all for it. Shame it's a scorder. Eh? <laughs> Do you realise, Norman, we built this paper up from nothing? We carry on the way we are doing. In the next two years, we're going to be the most important news gathering source this side of the canal. Thank you, Citizen Kane. <laughs> what have we got for the people this week? Right, well... There's a couple of jumble sales. Mm. <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Peterson is giving a talk in the scout hut about the ozone layer. <laughs> oh, and they said they could get Diddy David Hamilton to open the mini market. Diddy David? That's marvellous. We could do a personality piece on him. Pictures, anecdotes, things like that. Oh, odd thought, boy, Nick's good. Ken, he's not from round here. The readers won't know that. <laughs> That's what you said the last time when you wrote that piece about Al Pacino. <laughs> I told you they'd never believe you worked at the biscuit factory. Mr. Osborne, this has just arrived. What is it? Usually, I think. Well, a little bald-headed man called Justin bought it in from the health food shop. Well, we have an understanding with some of our advertisers. They get free space in the newspaper. And in return, we get uh, free muesli, dry cleaning, the odd pair of shoes. Norman, there's a word for it. What is it? Tax evasion. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Hey, very nice, eh? What? Our Miss Parker Smith. Ken, Ken, stop thinking with your trousers. <laughs> Try and control your libido. Libido? Just shift your saliva glands down to fifth gear. 
There's a lot of work to be done here, Ken. Try wooing the advertisers. Do you realise there's not one restaurant in this town got an advert with a klaxon? The first Mrs Osborne had a libido. I used to have to blow it up when we went to Skedna. <laughs> Sorry? It was a big blue one. What? Well, and then it got punctured. So she hung it up in the shed. Oh, you mean a lilo? Do I? Well, I certainly hope so, Ken. <laughs> now, listen, I'm going to do some ringing round. You sit here and try and calm down. I'm sure Julie doesn't want you dribbling all over. <laughs> but what you're thinking about is unfair, outdated and out of order. By the way... What? Bubbles loves his pixie business. <laughs> OK, yes. I'll be round about 12.30. OK, thank you. Bye. Wouldn't it be quicker to chip it out of stone? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah. I'm afraid I'm not used to such an old machine. Mm. What time do the others come in? Others? What others? Well, what about the staff? Monty Lamont, drama critic, old Pete the gardener. Oh, them? Them? Oh, they're, they're in and out. <laughs> We've got reporters everywhere. This phone never stops ringing. Usually. Sorry, but all this is causing havoc to my learning curve. Just how big is this operation? Oh, we're growing in size and importance every day. As I was saying to Ken just this morning, with the cogs on the gears of the wheels of the cars that run down the grease on the streets of Oxford. <laughs> Julia, have you got a moment? Thank you. <laughs> Two copies, okay. <laughs> Oddthorpe Clarks and an advertiser. How may I help you? Oh, Pete, the gardener. Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Pete. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course, one moment. Yeah, OK, go ahead. <laughs> this is the time of year you've got to get your taters in. So... <laughs> what is for you? Julia? Oh, yes! I'm so sorry, Mr. Pete. I was... Oh, Mr. Lamond. Oh, well, look, I'm awfully sorry. I was talking to old Pete. Could you ring back? Well, yes, I'm sure your column is more interesting, but... Yeah, hang on. Mm -hmm. Yes, hang on. Right, go ahead. The Oddthorpe Players production of Magwood? Oh, yes. Is one not to be missed. Yes, yes, I can hang on. Have you got 10p? <laughs> OK, yeah. OK, ta. <laughs> Yes, Miss Lamont. Yes, we've got to Mac what? Oh, Beth. <laughs> Despite being heavily pregnant, Mrs. Iris Jenkins gave a stunning performance as Banco's ghost. The performance, however, was marred when Burnham Wood came to Dunsinane. And Mr. Simpkins, though admirably dressed as a bush, lost his way and fell into the audience. <laughs> there was consternation when on the line, out, out, damn spot, the Dalmatian refused to leave the, the stage. I suppose you think this is funny. No, no, no. No, no, I... I couldn't resist it. So, apart from Monty Lamont and old Pete, who else are you? I'm Monty Peggy, the Reverend Parsons, and... Keep fit with Kit. Would you like a cup of tea? Good idea. Tea? Please. Have you seen the post, Norman? No. They've got twice as much news and three times more advertising than us. Mr. Osborne, that tap in the kitchen really does need fixing. I can't turn it off. Well, call a plumber. Well, I thought perhaps you could have a look at it. I don't know one end of a tap from another. Norman said you used to be a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd better see what I can do. Used to be a plumber? Another one of your fantasies, is it? Eh? You know nothing about a newspaper. Used to be a plumber. No, Ken, Ambrose probably mentioned you being a plumber, but she got the wrong end of the stick. That's what you said to the other one, didn't you? Eh, he knows nothing about newspapers. He used to be a chicken farmer. <laughs> what did you say to the one before that? Something or other, I forget. Well, come on. 
I'm all ears. Tell me. I said you was a defrock priest with a whippet fixation. <laughs> you didn't. No wonder she didn't come back after lunch. Charles, Dan, I think it's under control. <coughs> what do you have all these old books for? Well, they come in useful for features. When we've no news, we print lists. You know, the sort of thing. Ten greatest escapes from World War II. Ten wives of the famous. Ten wettest places in the world. We came forth. <laughs> Love letters of a Portuguese nun? Oh, we haven't used that yet. But the good bits are underlined in red. <laughs> Ask Ken. Oh, the newspapers were full of news. Not ours. Well, we have features, human interest stories, adverts, chance to win a dream home. Oh, is that some sort of sponsorship deal? No, we don't have a dream home. You haven't? Well, what happens when somebody wins? Nobody will ever win. Why not? The questions are impossible. Bamba Gascoigne couldn't even answer them. <laughs> it's excitement, you see, to grab the readers. Ken, we need excitement to grab the advertisers. Especially the restaurants. If you're worried about restaurants, why not do a list of ten of the best? We can't. Why not? There's only five. <laughs> any chance of any more milk? Yes. Ken, that's it, that's it. Five best restaurants? I'm sorry, Norman. I don't like the sound of that. No, no. We'll do a feature on all the restaurants in town. And when they read our piece about how wonderful they are, they'll be falling over each other for advertising space. Good idea. I'm glad I thought of that. We'll do it. <laughs> all right, I'll ring round and see if I can get us some free meals, Ken. Is there anybody in the office downstairs? No, just some new people moved in. Why? I think the water started seeping through the floorboards. Oh, water. Water? <laughs> Mrs. Osborne? No, thank you. I'm sweet enough already. <laughs> What's that smell round the office? Oh, we had a bit of a problem with a leak. Some water got under the carpet, but it's okay. Norman fixed it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure Mr. Osborne will be long. That's been his problem all his life, love. <laughs> Those new people downstairs are parked a van in my space, Julia. That's my place. I reserved it. And I paid for it. Oh, hello, Annette. Checking up on Ken, are we? You still working here, Norman? No, no, I'm the Beirut correspondent for the Sunday Times. <laughs> the pay is very good, but it's a hell of a slog on the buzz in the morning. <laughs> of course I'm still working here. Pity. If I had my way, I'd be somewhere in the sun, surrounded by hot and cold running women. But you can't afford a place in the sun. I can. I can go anywhere I please. Why don't you try Devil's Island? <laughs> I don't know why Ken puts up with you. Because I'm special, that's why. You don't find them like me just anywhere. I would have thought the zoos were full of them. <laughs> Hello, dear. Bubbles! Bubbles. <laughs> what do you look like? What are people going to say about me if they see you looking like this? Looking like what? Oh, that's my little soldier. Always <laughs> pretending he doesn't know. Looks all right to me. Norman, be a love. Hold your breath and count to a million. Ken, will you tell her that I'm important? He is. He's quite important. Yes, well, you wouldn't know an important person from a jar of pickle. No, dear. Do you agree with everything she says to you? Of course I don't. This may be a little difficult for you to understand, Mr. Gnome, <laughs> but Ken and I have a very modern marriage. We have a microwave. <laughs> The term modern marriage refers to free and open relationship. Let's go and be free and open in your office. Did you promise to love, honour and obey that? Yeah. You sit down and shut up before your batteries run out. <laughs> She's a character. Yes, it's Freddie from Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> I can explain. Listen, I can explain. I thought I told you to get rid of that man. It's not as easy as that. He virtually writes the paper on his own. Find someone else. What? The money would pay him? Well, I suppose I could try writing it myself. In what colour? Crayon? <laughs> I bought you this paper because you said that's what you wanted. And then against my wishes, you hire some chutney-hickney reporter who couldn't keep a job anywhere else. And why? 
because you used to sit next to him at school. <laughs> Until he went up to grammar. This is business, Ken. You've got to be hard. And I'd appreciate it for the sake of me and my money if you'd start acting a little more like a businessman and a little less like a meringue. <laughs> Good afternoon, monsieur. May I help you? Oh, hello, Ken. Hello, Frank. How's the newspaper business? You were our lead story this week in the food section. I know. Egon Rona has been telling me all about it. Mm. Can you ask him if he's finished with the brown sauce? <laughs> How's it going, then? Don't ask. Every place I've been, the food's the same. I'm sure there's one cook in this town. <laughs> and he's got a bike. Ken, whose idea was this? What's the matter with you? I thought you enjoyed eating. I do, but I like variety. I feel like Elizabeth Taylor on her honeymoons. You know what you're going to get? You hope it's going to be different. <laughs> well, it doesn't look too bad, does it? I mean, patty, soup, prawn, cocktail. Prawns? I've had that many prawns, my anorak's turning into a shell. <laughs> and this place is the worst so far. Ken. Don't look now, but look at the ceiling. Ugh. Yes, it's the same colour as the waiter's teeth. <laughs> Maybe he's French, I'm Frank Bruno. I asked for Gatto, he's bought me some cake. <laughs> you want some? No, I better not. I've got a dicky tummy. Doctor tells me I've got a touch of dyslexia. <laughs> it's funny that. My doctors can't read their own writing. Mm. <laughs> what fetches you to this temple of culinary excellence? And where's Freddy? She's in the shop next door breaking a few mirrors. I saw your car outside. You know, Ken, I don't know what you saw in that woman. She's like desperate done with a perm. <laughs> oh, man, we've both got a lot to thank her for. No, Ken, you've a lot to thank her for. When you fancied yourself as Nigel Mansell, she bought your sports car. When you fancied yourself as Robert Maxwell, she buys your newspaper. Oh, don't ever fancy yourself as Richard Branson. Because there's no virgins in this town. <laughs> I've checked. You know, I wish you two would get on. She doesn't like me. Oh, come on, it's not that... She hates my guts. Oh, it's just a clash of personalities, that's all. It's like Thatcher and Kinnock, Tom and Jerry, Nina Miskoff, and everybody. <laughs> She's never liked me from the day you married her, Ken. Well, you were sick on the bridesmaids. <laughs> Must have been something I've eaten. Oh, nothing to do with the ten pints of brown ale you had. There were no reason for her to say what she said. And anyway, it's a physical impossibility. <laughs> even for a small man. I've been thinking. Oh, that's beginner's luck, get into it. <laughs> pop page. A pop page? No, no. You want a pop page, you write it yourself. I've enough on my plate. I'm the business end. You're the creative one. You're beginning to sound like an old man, Norman. I'm not an old man. But my music were good music. Mm. Music you could dance to. Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis. You could understand the lyrics, Ken. Well, except that I'm faith. <laughs> but it's not like today, is it? All them kids spinning round on the back with the legs in the air. If you saw a dog like that, you'd worm it. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go to the last restaurant for you. No, no, Ken, please. I've saved the best for last. It's the Italian. I insist, Norman. What about your dicky tummy? Well, I'm sure a little pasta isn't going to hurt. And anyway, you're full to busting now. Did monsieur enjoy his meal? Oh, uh, yeah. I hope you're going to write nice things about us. Oh, yeah, yeah. I need some practice with my fiction. Au <laughs> revoir, monsieur. ta -ra, Frank. Jack <coughs> I gave it too much water. <laughs> you don't look well. I don't feel well. What's wrong? It must have been them several meals I've eaten. Well, it's a good paper this week anyway. Do you think so? Oh, yes, and Romney Reg says my stars are very good. You tore a Scorpio Pisces. Scorpio. Oh, you don't write those as well. Yes, I do. And that lot's going to have bad luck next week. It's the same with the weather forecast. It's either showers with occasional sunshine or sunshine with occasional showers. <laughs> I'll go wrong that way. Oh, I'm telling you. Is there something I can get you? No, I couldn't face anything this morning. I think I know just what you need. 
You've been eating too much rich food and you're obviously not used to it. Oh, what the hell's this? Music from Jeff Dean's health food shop. Don't they grow mushrooms in this? I've got a plumber to fix that tap. What tap? The one that was dripping. Don't mention dripping. <laughs> Do you eat this? Oh, no, I start the day with fresh fruit and a good hard workout. <laughs> well, it's quite nice, really, isn't it? Norman! Come in, dear. What do you think of the newspaper this week, then, Norman? It's all right. All right? All right? It's more than all right. It's very all right. And the photos are good, too. Well, at least I got on back from the chemist in time this week. <laughs> hey, I love this. In an exclusive survey conducted for the Claxton, gastronomic expert Hugo Kloss, <laughs> age 32. <laughs> 32? Poetic license. Oh. Has pinpointed the five finest restaurants in town. Set between the railway embankment and the bus depot. <laughs> Ernest Calf offers the best traditional British fare. Dumplings nestling between rare beef and a selection of fresh garden vegetables. Reminding us that English cuisine is just the thing to get your chops round. <laughs> poetry, Norman. Poetry. It's easy writing it. You want to try eating it. <laughs> Norman, this is marvellous. This is fantastic. This is great. This is going to get the advertisers flocking in. We'll do the same again next week. Can't we try the pups? <laughs> Freddy's back. <laughs> oh, Annette, darling. Have you seen this? One of our better editions. You think so? Yes, we've got a double-page spread on the five finest restaurants in town. Have you seen the post? In a late-night swoop by health inspectors, two of thought restaurants are being closed. <laughs> a spokesman said it was a public disgrace and diners were taking their lives in their hands. <laughs> These are restaurants you have given a five-star rating to. What? Why don't you go the whole hog and recommend a three-course dinner of salmonella, listeria and botulism? Mr. Osborne. Yes. You know that impossible competition with a fabulous prize that we haven't got, but it doesn't matter because nobody will win it anyway. What about it? I've got a man on the phone who says he's won it. Oh, bloody hell. Well, you go and talk to him. Oh! Hello, can the peptic juice is playing up again, are they? No, it's, it's my stomach, Norman. <laughs> then you shouldn't have had that Italian meal last night, should you? I didn't go. The only thing I've eaten in the last two days is Justin's muesli. <laughs> <laughs> 